In this video, we discuss how to derive the behavioral number law. Okay, so we're uh, trying to uh, turn our attention to more quantitative aspects of spectroscopy, and uh, we're going to examine uh, absorption of spectroscopy from the perspective of uh, quantifying uh, how much so, uh, uh, species of interest we have in the sample. Okay, so uh, we're going to take um, a picture here of how the sample looks like, the sample holder. Okay, and we're just going to have here again a schematic of uh, a cuvette, all right, which might look like this. And what we know is the following. This is how the uh, experiment takes place. You send your photons, okay, of, uh, uh, of given uh, energy uh, with some intensity uh, that before it hits that uh, cuvette where the sample is, it has an intensity I naught. And then after the uh, photons cross the sample, some of them uh, might be absorbed by the sample Okay, and then uh, the energy, uh, the system will go from a low energy state to a high energy state, and then uh, because those photons get absorbed, you actually get an intensity at the end of the cuvette that is lower than the intensity that you had uh, before that beam of photons hit that uh, sample. Now, uh, we define the transmittance as the intensity uh, that you get at the end divided over the initial intensity. That is the transmittance. And then uh, from here, we actually define the absorbance, okay, as the minus based on log of uh, the transmittance, which is this, okay. But notice that uh, this is also exactly the same as the following, based on log of I naught over I. Where the only thing that I've done is just flip this um, uh, ratio there inside the logarithm, and this changes the sign of the logarithm. Okay, so uh, the way that we actually do these experiments is, again, you just measure the intensity at the end of the experiment compared to the intensity that you had before uh, uh, the radiation hit the sample, and then you calculate the absorbance. And in the end, what we know is that the absorbance is equal to uh, the more extension coefficient times the concentration of solute in the sample and the path length. Okay, where the path length is just this distance, that is the path length, and then uh, uh, your active substance is J, okay? That is a sample that absorbs totem, and this is just a proportionally the constant that we call the uh, molar absorptivity or, mo or molar uh, extension coefficient. The question is, well, how can actually uh, how can we actually derive that? All right. So we're we are actually going to assume here that we're going to divide this uh, cuvette into tiny little slices here, okay? Very small slices. And then we're just going to uh, extract one, okay, right here. And we're going to be asking a few questions about what happens in this particular slice. Okay, again, the rest of the sample could be divided over uh, these tiny little, little slices. All right, so uh, we know that uh, if the intensity is I, okay, before uh, you hit that particular slice, then after uh, photons have been absorbed by whatever little uh, sample you actually have in that slice, then the intensity has decreased by a tiny little amount differential of I, okay? Because this slice in this infinitesimal, again, the absorption uh, uh, that you're producing, the uh, uh, drop in intensity is very small. And again, we can ask the question, well, this differential of I, what is it proportional to? Well, uh, it's going to be proportional to the concentration of J that you have, okay? It should matter if you have lots of J molecules or just a few J molecules they are absorbing, okay? So uh, it should be proportional to the concentration of J. It should also be proportional to the intensity, right? It's not the same uh, uh, to hit this, this little slice with a million photons than with 10 photons, right? If you have a million photons, you should observe more absorption than if you only have 10 photons. So there should also be uh, the right proportionality between this uh, drop in intensity and the intensity uh, with which you are actually hitting that sample. Okay? And finally, this should also be proportional to uh, the width of these slice, right? If you have a lot large slice, you, ha you have more chances at um, uh, absorbing than you actually have a very narrow slice. Okay, so there is the dependence on uh, uh, how wide that slice is. We actually also know that uh, the intensity is dropping, so this is actually a negative number. Okay, so what that means is that well, all of this is going to depend on a minus constant, and again, uh, it should be linearly proportional to the intensity, the concentration, and the path length. 
All right, so actually this sets up a differential equation that we can uh, go on and solve to see what we actually get. The first thing that we do is we group uh, terms together okay, that are alike, differential of i over i, and that leads a uh, constant. And then we have here the concentration of j and the differential of l. Okay, so now we have uh, a term separated and we're ready to integrate okay, to calculate not only how the intensity changes in a slice, but in the entire cuvette. Okay, so the change in the intensity goes from the start of the experiment where the intensity is i naught to the end of the experiment where the intensity is i, this i at the end. Okay, and this gets integrated from uh, uh, L is equal to zero, okay, the start of the cuvette, until the entire path line, okay, where uh, the distance is L. Right, so we actually know that the integral of that is going to be the natural log of i over i naught. Uh, this is a constant uh, that does not depend on the path length, but we're assuming that the concentration of J is equal uh, throughout uh, uh, the cuvette, okay, so that is a constant as well. So those two things factor out, okay, minus constant, concentration of J. And then you simply have that uh, you have to uh, then integrate, okay, differential of L from the start of the box to uh, left L, and that is simply going to be just the path line, okay, which is this. All right, so uh, this is starting to look uh, quite a bit like uh, the beer lumber law, okay, notice that we already have here the concentration, we have the path length, we also have a constant that looks a little different, okay. Uh, now, what we actually have here is a negative sign, which does not uh, seem to agree with what we have, what we have in the beer lumber law, but we can take care of that by simply uh, inverting uh, this logarithm, right? If I do this, i naught over i, okay, that changes the sign, which means that this is equal to constant concentration of j times path length, okay, which now looks very much like uh, the beta lumber law. Notice though that uh, what we actually have here for absorbance is the uh, natural log of i naught over i. But the absorbance is not the natural log, it's actually the base ten log. Well, it turns out that the natural log and the base ten log are actually linearly, linearly uh, related. Okay, so uh, this is exactly the same uh, thing as that. They're only different by a constant. So in the, in the end, what I, what I can do is the, is the following. The natural log of i naught over i is equal to a constant that I'm going to call k times the constant that I already had and then concentration of J times the path line. And this is exactly what the beer lumber law is. Notice that this is just the absorbance. These two constants I'm going to call the molar absorption coefficient, and then that is just the concentration times the path line. Okay, so again, notice that by examining how the experiment takes place, when our forms absorb and, and uh, uh, what is that decrease in intensity uh, uh, depending on, we've actually been able to derive the beer lumber law from scratch. Now the question is, well, why do we use the beer lumber law? Okay, well, the beer lumber law is used for uh, quantification purposes. It's very good for determining how much uh, solute, how much sample you actually have uh, uh, in your particular experiment. Notice that you can rearrange here the beer lumber law to solve for the concentration of your active species, the one that absorbs the photons, and this is going to be equal to the absorbance Okay, over the uh, more absorptivity and the path line. So the experiments are fairly simple. You just measure how uh, much the intensity changes. Okay, take the base ten log that is equal to uh, uh, the absorbance, then uh, divide over the um, more absorptivity path length, and that should give you what uh, the concentration of your active species in the sample should be.